Welcome back to WebCAF AI. We do daily ChatGPT and AI videos for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the app of Looping and see how we can integrate that with AI and Zapier. Now, if you're not familiar with this series, essentially we're tackling all 5,000 apps found on Zapier and seeing how AI can integrate with every single one. For this specific video, we're going to be looking at the app of Looping as described before, and we're going to see the best way we can kind of tackle AI in this context. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna go ahead and rename this to Looping by Zapier. We plan on doing in today's video is we're gonna use the looping feature specifically when it comes to manipulating data in a spreadsheet, see how we can use and leverage it with AI and push it towards a Google Doc. To start off, let's go ahead and do a manual trigger here. So we're gonna do Basecamp and we're gonna go ahead and do a new to-do. This is just so I can showcase how this will look like live for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and do an account. We're gonna choose our project in Basecamp. And then it can be any to-do set, but we're gonna go ahead and specify, we're gonna do to-dos, and then specifically for us, we're gonna do menu trigger. If you wanna learn more about menu triggers, make sure to check our AI automation playlist here on this channel as we do a whole service based off a manual trigger. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and test this action. As you see here, no new data has been found, but this is due to the fact that I have not triggered this yet, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's go ahead and add our next block here, which is gonna be our Excel sheet, or in this context, Google Sheets. So we're gonna do Google Sheets here. And we're gonna go ahead and do find Google Sheet by line item because we're gonna use the looping function specifically in the context of line items. For reference, this is the Google Sheet we're gonna be manipulating the data for. We have our caption topics, the context for the caption topics, and then a yes or no whether they are ready to be pushed towards a social media channel. Now, what we plan on doing here essentially is use the looping feature so we don't have to necessarily create a manual trigger for four different times. Rather, we're going to use a looping feature in order to itemize this data into four different captions using the caption topic, the context, and whether it is ready or not. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and do continue here. We're going to choose our courses account here found at Web Cafe AI. I'm going to go ahead and continue. And then we're going to choose the spreadsheet that we were just testing with, which is going to be looping by Zapier example, the specific worksheet, which is example. And then the lookup column is going to be whether the caption is ready to be pushed forward or not in this specific zap. So we're going to go with the ready column. And then specifically, the lookup value is going to be that yes or no. So in this context, we're just going to put yes, because we're looking for data that is ready to be manip manipulated. From here, we can go ahead and hit continue and then test this action. All right, perfect. So as you see here, we got the four different rows that had the yes enabled. If we went ahead and jumped back over here, it did not pull the data associated with the row that had known it because in this context, we're saying that, hey, maybe this caption topic and the context for the caption topic is not ready to be pushed forward for this zap yet. From here, we get to learn why looping is so special. This is gonna allow us to optimize our workflows a lot better when it comes to AI automation. So we're gonna go ahead and add our looping block here. So we're gonna do looping by Zapier. And we're going to do an event of looping, create a loop for line items and then continue here. And then we're going to go ahead and get the values associated with the loop. So in this context, we're going to be using the column titles. So we have our first column title being caption topics. And then we're going to come over to our spreadsheet here and go to column A, which was associated with that. We're going to add another variable point here. We're going to do context, which is going to be column B. So we grab that, go to column B here. And then we can go ahead and add this last one just for reference. We're gonna go ahead and add the last column here, which is ready. And then go ahead and input the data associated with what we found here. Perfect. From here, we can go ahead and continue and then test this action. So what this allows us to do essentially is rather than us, you know, manually triggering this four different times, we can do one manual trigger and then it'll essentially be able to find the specific data associated with each line item that we care about. So what we can do from here essentially is we can add a chat GBT block. And then in the ChatGPT block, we're going to go ahead and do conversation. Go ahead and do a very simple prompt here. We're going to say context. We are a dog company. And this is for our social medias. Based off this caption information. I'm going to do semicolon. I'm going to do topic. I'm going to do context. And then we're gonna go ahead and input the underlying variables that we had from the looping. It's important that we choose looping here. And we come down here. You're not gonna to wanna to choose the one that says preview loop value captions preview. This is gonna give all four data points. We don't want all four data points. We want these specific data points associated with each row. So what we wanna do is we wanna to go to context topics or caption topics adoption right here. And then for the context, we can go ahead and add more parentheses here. 
we're going to go ahead and input the caption or context. This one right here, you don't want to use the preview. You want to use the one that's you know directly to it. And then that will specifically give for that specific row, the data for the topic and the context. Then we're just going to simply say generate a social media caption. Obviously, we get a lot more advanced here of the structuring of the prompt. We could probably up the model, add a memory key, but it's not really necessary for this tutorial as I just want to show you the capabilities of looping. We're going to go do a continue here and then want to test this action. Okay, so as you see here, we went ahead and got our social media caption based off the topic and context here. I do want to add a parameter block right now just because of the fact that that is a pretty lengthy caption. So I'm going to do parameter uh, max of one sentence, three hashtags, and then that's just going to basically make it so that our captions are a little bit more concise here as I feel like the only way we'd be able to use that caption would be for like a Facebook post. Maybe you want to use it for Twitter or Instagram or so on. Perfect. So as you see here, we got our output here. Uh, join us as we unveil the incredible journey of our rescue dogs from hardships to happiness, three specific hashtags, and then I grab the data that we gave, which was the topic of the caption and then the context of the caption. From here, we go ahead and add a Google Doc block here. As for the purposes of today's tutorial, I just want to push it towards um, a specific document so we can kind of see live how this would look like. We go ahead and do find document as we need to find the document. We're going to push the text towards Hit continue here. We're going to choose our courses account here at web cafe and they continue here. And then we're going to get the document name. This is just a blank Google doc. We went ahead and copied the document name here. We're going to jump back over to our Zapier and we're going to do caption outputs, continue test this action. And the reason we're finding the document before we push the text towards the document is due to the fact in order to push text towards the document, you're going to have to get the underlying ID for the API to call it upon. So we're going to go ahead and grab another Google doc here. And we're going to go ahead and do the event of a pen text document and then hit continue, continue. We wouldn't be able to put the document name that, you know, caption output in this context. We're going to actually have to be, we're actually going to have to put <laughs> the find document and more specifically the ID variable here. Once we do that, we can go ahead and append the text here. Um, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of HTML here. So I'm going to put P and then put the output from this. Perfect. And I'll put another P here just so we can have a little bit of indentation. This is not going to be perfect. Obviously, you probably want to add a little bit more HTML here. I'm going to go to continue and I'm going to go ahead and skip that test so that we can go ahead and see live what this would look like. Okay, perfect. So what should occur here is when I put in a new to do, it should look up the values in the spreadsheet. It should basically grab the data associated with every single row and make it specific to every single row rather than all four data points and essentially print out four separate captions based off the data that we inputted on our Excel sheet. So we're going to go ahead and hit publish here and let's see if this works. Jumping over to our manual trigger here, we're going to go ahead and put in anything here because we need to put a filter in order to basically make it so it only executes for a specific input. So we can put anything here. We're just going to go ahead and put in the input of go. We're going to jump over to Google Doc and then we should see four separate captions show up here. So I'm going to keep this live and let's see what happens here. Boom, we got a first one. Boom, we got a second one. Give me the third. Third, and then give me the fourth. There's the fourth. There you go. It works perfectly. As you see, we're able to use that looping in order to ensure that I wouldn't have to maybe put in that trigger four separate times. Rather, we can do it one time and get four separate outputs. Really cool stuff. As always, the Zapier we created in today's video can be found in the description down below, so you can add that to your project for completely free. If you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at WebCafe AI. If you want to learn more about AI and automation when it comes specifically to ChatGPT and Zapier, check out the playlist at the end of this video as we're diving into all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend and seeing how AI can be integrated with every single one. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at WebCafe where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.